we are. Oh, I am hot. And not in the good way. Mm, yes. Yes. How's everyone doing this evening? Thank you for joining me. Here in the studio, beautiful Boise, Idaho. I hope everyone is just loving the finally the bluebird days that we're starting to get here. So here we are. I'm gonna stop that. Mm -hmm. mm. So here we are. I've been thinking about that phrase a lot this last week. Um, you know, if you're if you're an old subscriber to the channel, you might remember that it used to be me and a guy named named Chad who I work with, and he actually came up with the phrase. So here we are. Um, when we started, there was a lot of improv involved, a lot of uh, bits. <laughs> We didn't, really, we didn't really know what we were doing, so I would just say to Chad something like, uh, Chad, say something about Hell Roaring Lake or where we're at. And Chad is a man of, of quirks, so Chad would always start with, so here we are. And he'd usually then go into, so here we are. Is it a bluebird day or not? So he would go, so here we are on a bluebird day at Hell Roaring Lake. Or you would say, so here we are on a bluebird day, on not a bluebird day in Sun Valley. And it kind of, it was kind of just a quirk that kind of bothered me, honestly. <laughs> um, but as I got more into YouTube, you know, I, I do care about this thing. I don't know if it comes across, <laughs> but I do research and I have books on YouTube and making better content and stuff. And one thing they always tell you is to, to have your own language. So any podcast you listen to, there's a language involved. Like if I say, pull that up, Jamie, most of you who have listened to Joe Rogan probably know what that means. And so I hated the Bluebird Day th part, but I encouraged him to keep using So Here We Are. And then I adopted it kind of as, um, I don't know, a catchphrase, something that just strings all the videos together. And on the surface, I guess it's a real simple thing since Chad was there and I was with him. He would say, so here we are, the obvious meaning being him and I in a place. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure if he meant it that way or how he meant it. I, I'll have to ask him. So last week I was in the Wind River Range of Wyoming doing 50 miles with my mom. And... Uh, Moms are always awesome, obviously. Uh, they're not quite therapists, but my mom always likes to remind me, you know, you came from me. <laughs> my cells are in your body. Yeah, she says stuff like that to me all the time. Um, and she's obviously my biggest fan. She watches all my stuff and uh, I had recently posted this video that maybe you've seen. It was in the Sawtooth where I uh, kind of lamented about just what the hell am I doing <laughs> out here with this camera and this YouTube channel. And my mom told me a few times, I didn't like that video. I didn't like that video. And 
being super defensive, I would just say, I don't care. I don't care. I, it's what, for what it was, or all these videos, like I, I do try to make them honestly. It was what I was feeling at the time, and um, I put it out there. But one night, I don't know how, she said it again. I didn't like that video. And instead of saying, I don't care, I asked her, why didn't you like that video, Mom? You're obviously wanting me to ask. <laughs> and she said, Jonathan, she calls me Jonathan, not John. Jonathan, I like to go with you on the adventures. And when you tell me that your camera is causing you anxiety and you feel like a gesture. That makes me feel like you don't want me with you. That wasn't my intention at all, but um, that made me just really stop and think. And I got back on that phrase, so here we are. And in that five days of just kind of hiking with my mom, I thought about it more, I talked to her more, and um, it was just beautiful. My mom is so, is so funny, you know, I'm always saying like, oh, I come out here for solitude or whatever that bullshit is. My mom, when she passed, Every group she passed on the trail in the Wind River Range, she talked to. Not said hi, not like howdy. She stopped and she wanted to know their story. And on day one, I remember I, I was like, you know, it's, it's fall, you're at like 10,000 feet, you're on the side of an exposed cliff. And I couldn't drag her away from a conversation. It's like, mom, we're about to pass over this huge pass with like 40 mile an hour winds. We have to get to our shelter please stop talking to people like I had a little bit of a panic attack um and we talked about it later that night of like why I mean what you want to talk to everyone out here and she was just like Jonathan these are my people we're out here because we love the same things why wouldn't I want to talk to them and that attitude that she had just, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was so annoying because obviously I'm her son and, you know, mothers just annoy you. But it was this beautiful sentiment that I was able to focus on and think about and to really wrap my head around what the hell this channel's about and what I'm doing with the camera. And it all comes back to that phrase. So here we are. Like, not me and Chad, but me and you. So here we are. You might be physically in your home, and I'm physically here in this studio in Boise. But we're here together. And when I think of it that way, and I think about these videos in that sense and I look at the camera and I talk to the camera like that's that was the whole point of this from the get-go and somewhere along I got lost in the analytics of this trying to make this work like the numbers of it and I forgot about this human side of it You know, Chris, the guy in the video, in the uh, Pioneer video that we're about to talk about, um, which I know I'll get to, he, uh, I had never met him. He came down from the saddle, he saw me, and he walked right up to me and he said, hey, I'm Chris. And I said, hey, I'm John. And he said, are you that guy from YouTube? And I was like, yeah, man. And. Uh, we ended up hanging out, and I'm so thankful he was there. And uh, 
I've been texting with him and he's actually coming back to go to the sawtooth with me uh, in a couple weeks. And um, that whole community aspect of this, I wanna get better at. I wanna try to get better at, you know, I was so, I was so worried about my mental health because obviously you get like these negative comments and um, just little things like, you know, you probably, you might have seen that I had to take a video down about biking because Tamarack didn't like the fact that I said that they're not done, which they aren't. Um, like those little things are like little rocks. Like if my mental health is a wall, those little things are like little rocks that are being tossed at the wall. And not one of them is like a cannon that takes down the wall, but you know, they start to crack the wall and chip it. And I think my defense was strategy was to make that wall higher, build that wall stronger. When really I should just take the wall down so that there's nothing to hit. So here we are. Um, with that being said, uh, on October 2nd, which is a Saturday coming up, I am going to be in Stanley. On October 3rd, I'm going to take the shuttle from Redfish Lodge across the lake to the inlet. And I'm going to hike up to Saddleback Lakes. I'm going to spend a night there. Chris from the Pioneer Mountains will be joining me. I, Matt from that I met on that uh, drift boat video on the Middle Fork will be joining me. And I have some other invites out. Uh, after the Saddleback Mountains that night, I am going to hike down to Barren, the Barren Divide and to Barren Lakes, spend another night there. And then after that, I think what I'm going to do is hike to the Grand Jean Lodge where I'll have a car and I will drive back to Stanley and we'll all pick up our cars. If you want to join me, you are more than welcome to. The way that you can reach me is by Instagram. I don't know why, Instagram just works the best in organizing that and I have all the copy and paste stuff. And like, no offense, it's a good way to just quickly vet people and make sure they're not insane. But if you're interested in that trip, it's gonna be cold as hell. And I am not a guide, so you better have your, you better like kinda know what you're doing. But if you wanna join us, hit me up on Instagram and uh, I'll send you the details. And I just, uh, moving forward, wanna build this community. I think I'm gonna go back to posting videos every Monday at like at five. Um, if a video comes out like the Pioneer Mountain one where it's an adventure, I'll follow it up with a live stream on Wednesday if I can. So I think these live streams are great to interact and I hope I'm getting better at them. And then I'm gonna add more gear videos, hopefully give you guys some more tips and tricks. I held off doing that for so long because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But now that I've spent so much money in gear and kind of know what I'm doing, um, I think that I can give you some, some decent advice. And uh, this winter I've got some fun stuff. I got a tent with a stove in it that we'll be trying out. I am going to do a cooking series with my mom because she's an amazing cook about how to make dehydrated meals. Seriously, in the Wind Rivers, we had a sushi rice bowl. It was like sushi. It was real sushi. It was crazy. Like, she's incredible. So we're going to do a, a series with, with that, with mom in the kitchen. And uh, yeah, I, hope you, I hope you stick with me. We is you and the people watching the videos that you produce. Yeah, that's that's what I, that's what I, that's what I hope people get out of it. Hi, I met you in Warren, Idaho. Really? Did you really? Where in Warren, where is Warren, Idaho? <laughs> I'm totally blanking on 
where Warren, Idaho is. Um, but hi, hi Leslie, nice to meet you again. Light it up, Tucker. Okay, and yes, the Hoka shoes kick ass. Thanks for the recommendation. You're welcome, you're welcome. Love the community hike idea. If you do a later season one with your winter stove, let us know. Well, I might, I gotta figure that one out. You know what I am gonna do? I know this was short no not notice everyone. I am also going to do a community hike next year. This is my last real backpacking trip of the year. Um, this one coming up in October, because if you know from Idaho, you know, that just things start closing up, closing down. And I'm not an experienced winter uh, backpacker yet. I've never backpacked in the winter. Uh, so, so like the winter series that you're gonna about to see of me backpacking is gonna start with me just like basically car camping and trying to figure this whole the whole setup out and the whole situation and hopefully we can kind of learn and grow in that together and then next june what i'm going to do i've been saying it and now i'm definitely going to do it we are doing a group community hike at the end of june i will make sure everyone knows we are going to go up and spend the night friday night in stanley i am then we are then going to take off from the Tin Cup Trailhead up to Alice Lake on Saturday. Um, Twin Lakes, we're going to stay the night at Twin Lakes on Saturday. And then if you want to on Sunday, you can continue on the Alice Talks Away loop. Or you can head back to the car from there. That's right under Snowy Side Pass. And we're just going to have a sweet community meet up there to start the season off right. And hopefully we can all meet. Um, and get together so that's going to be coming next june but i wanted to give it a test run before <laughs> before we did that so this one is kind of an impromptu one i know people probably can't get work off you know monday and tuesday but that's what i had planned and and new john wants wants to take people out so if you're interested i'm on instagram john underscore conti or something like that uh that's just the best way for me to figure it out love the area north of crouch i love that area too it's been we i tried to get up into the trinity lake area this year and uh they had a road closure because of a rock slide um man it's been a bummer of a year at this smoke i swear you know as a photographer outside the smoke is kind of messed with me even more than COVID if you're from Idaho. Like, Idaho reacted to COVID with like, half of us will wear masks, and then that's the only difference. So, so COVID didn't affect me as much as like the smoke has, because the smoke, I mean, travel plans and, and work has, like, people didn't stop hiring us during COVID. But people have put their, their photography, especially outdoor photography plans, on hold because of the smoke. And obviously a lot of the trips that I planned or wanted to do, like I've been wanting to get to the Sawtooth this year and I've been procrastinating so that it cleared up because I want to go to them and uh, hang out. So. With that, where do we start with this video? Okay, so let's just start and jump into the map here so I can show you all where this, this hike was in the Pioneer Mountains. Really beautiful area. I do say in the video that it's the highest lake in Idaho. I have had some debate. Uh, Mr. Daniel uh, Schaefer, who is also a YouTuber, hiking YouTuber out of Coeur d'Alene, he just released a video with a different lake that he says is the highest lake in Idaho. And uh, there's some conflicting reports. I used this book, which um, I don't really recommend. I'll get into why in a second. But this book to plan the trip, and in this book it says it's the highest lake in Idaho. So it's close, all right? The Pioneer Mountains are kind of by uh, Sun Valley. We will. I will show you. Whoa! I hope I'm still alive. Come back. Hold please. I need a Jamie 
if anyone want it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this. Bam, bam. All right, so as you can see here, this is the Fall Creek Trailhead right here, and over here is Sun Valley. So if you're wondering like, where in the hell was John? This is where I took Sun Valley. You go through Sun Valley, up this road. It's a, it's a very rough dirt road kind of up here and around to the Fall Creek Trailhead. Google Maps took me like to a little ranch right here when I put it in. Uh, you just keep going if Google Maps is like, turn right. Uh, no, it's down here. So just be aware that your Google Map might take you there. And then the Fall Creek Trailhead is here. Now, most people that do this, and I mean, not most people, a lot of people go to this lake over here. This is called Moose Lake. And while I was there, someone said that there was a moose there. So aptly named. And this is a real easy and nice hike. There, from here all the way to here is very, very easy. You can see on Google Earth, hopefully, where it gets intense. You can see this kind of uphill stretch going on right here. So if you're looking for something easier, Moose Lake is a really nice, I didn't make it there, but I mean, the, the hike there is nice. This whole valley is nice. Uh, this is where the majority of people from this trail, all the people from this trailhead while I was there were going and coming from. Um, this is obviously the loop. If we pull back and see what I did in terms of a loop, it's, uh, up over here, I then went down to Betsy, like you saw in the video, up over this pass, down to Goat, back up, back over, and back over this, and through here. Now, this is why I don't recommend this book. Um, and I'm probably getting ahead of myself here, but whatever. Uh, I did not that like this book said that that scramble that you saw in the video where I uh, where I climbed over that mountain was like I think it says something like if you have some experience scrambling this is like really cool to make it a loop there was a point on that scramble where I was like on the side of the mountain and I was stuck I couldn't go back I couldn't go forward and it was like this next step may hurt me like I may fall to my death like it was a it was a really intense scramble and I do feel like I'm a very experienced scrambler with that stuff and to be honest that was just dangerous <laughs> and uh, not something I'd recommend I there was also like no benefit to it this um, like this canyon here, over here, is not prettier than this one. And this extends, this is a longer hike back too, with not a real defined trail. So I went over this dangerously, and then I came down, which was also, this was dangerous as hell, and then it's like, oh yeah, there's no trail and you're gonna just have to like bushwhack all the way back to here. And like my buddy Chris that I met up there, he just went this way back, which is absolutely the way I would do it, an out and back. Um, unless you just, I don't know, go for glory <laughs> if you want. But uh, I seriously gained nothing from that. There were other people at Goat Lake too, and they seemed to come from over here, the Broad Canyon campground. So I believe there's another way to access it that might be a little bit easier. But this lake, 10,148, was one of the highlights, and that was actually, um, I wanted to get to there, so that's why I went this way. Um, but you can do some research, maybe if you're not one to, to for like the super uphill, you can you can stay at Broad Canyon Campground and you can hike back this way. Uh, 
a lot of horse packers and stuff like that on on this one so six miles real uphill section and then you get to this this valley here that was in the video called surprise valley um whoa. let me pull this up real quick oh i love when i put my stats just up on the screen real quick that's really dumb Need jamie Hold, please. Bam. So this is Surprise Valley. Um, if you get up to that top there, sorry, scrubbing, right here. So you'll open up to this valley. This is where the trail ends. And you really just have to kind of bushwhack over over to this lake that sits up over here. So the trail ends at Surprise Valley. This is about two miles from that Betty Lake, so it's not it's not much further to go. Um, and then obviously Surprise Valley is is this stunning thing, and like ten thousand one forty eight is there. I I think it's still called 10,148. I don't know why they call it don't call it Surprise Lake, but this is a stunning place. Um, again, I saw no one, no fish, nothing like that. So this is a good day hike as well, or just like a good campsite if you want to go up there and you don't want to make the huge scramble over the peak to to Betty Lake. Um, that was kind of the 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 sweetest campsite as we can tell. But after that, you do have to make this kind of brutal, brutal hike here up over the pass. Let's play this, John. Oh, I had some other things going, some other issues too <laughs> on this trip that were hilarious. Um, so I did this, I was making this video uh, Morgan Hillbilly is going to like this. I went before this trip and I bought a total art, the cheapest hiking outfit that I could find from REI. I won't spoil the video and tell you how much it costs, but this outfit, if you're looking at it, those are not my normal shoes. Those are the new REI co-op hiking boots. That is an REI co-op shirt. I am even wearing REI co-op underwear. <clears throat> and uh, the blisters that I got on my feet were insane, were absolutely insane. I never get blisters with my speed goats. Um, I had taken these and I had just hiked around the foothills back here once to try to like keep from getting blisters. But yeah, I, it just reinforces my, my belief that you should not wear waterproof hiking boots because my feet were torn to shreds. I also got some pretty serious altitude sickness at Lake 10,148. I think I talked about it in a previous live stream. Now, that's mainly because I was so excited and I had, I didn't have my normal water filter. So normally I take with me this and you can see how big it is. This is the gravity four liter, uh, platypus gravity four liter filter. Um, it's obviously this big cumbersome thing. And I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe I want to try out like something smaller. But I love this thing because you could just hang it up. Oh, it's still wet from my time in the Wind River Range. Everyone that I go with, no one brings their own water filter. They're like, John, do you have your gravity? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, we'll just use yours. It's like, all right, um, but you can see how big it is. Like it hangs up, you put dirty water in one bag, it filters through this thing, and then it goes into this bag. I really like it because you could just like set it in camp and then you have this thing that is not just your water, it's, um, you know, hand washing, dish washing, anything like that, coffee, I just go, I just put it in the jet boil. I really, really liked that. But what I did instead was I brought this. 
obviously something super smaller. You probably are familiar with these. This is the Sawyer Mini. I hated this. Um, it comes with all this stuff that I don't even know what it is. All I took was, what is this? What is this? Why would I use this? What is this? It is a cleaner? I'm supposed to clean with this? I'm performing surgery? That's garbage. Um, a bag? Like, oh, it's so dumb. Um, I, I, I don't even know what that is. A straw? Sorry, the AC just kicked on and I need it. Um, anyways, the flow in this is god awful. And this is so funny because that guy, Chris, mad props to Chris. Like, he came out with no experience and just the wrong equipment and i loved him for that like you just like you're not going to get it right you got to go out and you got to do it you got to learn from your mistakes like you got to get the you got to let mother nature just kind of kick the shit out of you <laughs> before it, to learn um but i had never gone without my gravity and chris showed up with uh no water filter he had a milk jug of just full of water and it was obviously gone by the time he got to me and he was just like i thought i'd be able to boil water i was like oh my god dude no so we ended up sharing this thing which is not good and i had altitude sickness mostly because i was dehydrated like that's the big thing so I was trying to hydrate with this. The, the flow in this is terrible. You know, you, you screw it to a plastic water bottle. Like he was taking my plastic water bottle, screwing it and just, you squeeze as hard as you can and just like, it's, it, it's not good. So I think that this contributed mostly to my altitude sickness and not the actual altitude. It was mostly just, I was super excited. My adrenaline was way too high. Uh, I got there way too fast, I sweat, and then I didn't properly hydrate because that thing was hard to hydrate with. So, take that to the bank if you're looking for water filters or anything like that. I did text Chris today. He's like, <laughs> are, we, are you gonna like, do steaks? Are we gonna do steaks night one uh, in the sawtooth? And I was like, yeah, we could do steaks, but also, do you have a new water filter? <laughs> And he assured me he did. <sighs> oh my gosh. Let's check in with the let's check in with the crew here. Oh, so you went right way around. Yeah. Isaac, Isaac here in the chat and I have been chatting about this lake. He's a fisher fisherman about those golden trout. Oh, and um, yeah, man, I went I went way around. <laughs> so I hope you saw it earlier, Isaac. Like there is a back way I was kind of telling you about, and um, it seemed like everyone was coming from there. That syringe is for a COVID injection. That's funny. Uh, I mean, honestly, if I was going to do it again, I'd just hike the out and back from from Fall Creek Trailhead up, fish, and go. John, do you still put all the weight at the bottom of your pack? Kind of, yeah, because I use the, the bottom where that sleeping bag opening is. I have an internal component that holds my camera gear. So to access my camera gear, I actually open up the sleeping bag uh, component. Then I open up the internal unit and I grab the gear. So you're thinking like the drone, which is heavy, is in that. Uh, an extra lens is in that. Um, extra batteries and stuff like that are mostly in the bottom and that's kind of how I have to do it. It's just, it's just what works. Um, so yeah, kind of a bummer. Honestly, I need a new backpack that's made for what I do, but I don't know if anyone makes it. I've looked at like Hunter's backpacks. I think that might be the next thing. At least Chris got his beer in the end. Chris killed it, man. Give it up for Chris. You know, I, that's a testament to, I just love that. Like when I was with my mom, she, she was so gung. We did the Rogue River trip first time, which has like 
4,000 feet of elevation game over 40 miles. It's like this flat thing. And we had terrific weather. So my mom was super gunk. She's been watching way too many YouTube videos. She's super gung ho about, about that trip. And then like she brought way too much stuff. She had it strapped to her back all wrong. It wasn't until like the final day when, when we were kind of in a pickle uh, on one of the final passes that I actually like took the stuff, like I, in the middle of it, like took the stuff off her and we had to rearrange because she was just not in the right spot. And if you saw my earlier videos at Alice Toxway, like my bag looks like a used diaper, like it's terrible. You just, I love anyone, Chris, like I love anyone that's just, it takes courage to get out there, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And the first time, you're not gonna know what you're doing. And for him to just get up and be like, you know what, I'm going, I'm doing it by myself, whatever. Like, <laughs> deserve that beer at the end. Sawyer Mini requires too much pressure. I carry larger Sawyer and keep Mini as backup. I've heard that the, the bigger Sawyer works better. I know that a lot of people use that, so um, maybe that works better, but. I think that more direct way they were walking about is what I have loaded into my Garmin. Isaac, you're going to have to let me know how that works. Look at the Gregory's. I have a Baltoro. I, did I say that right? The whole back opens up. You'll be leaning over less with the weight higher. Yeah. Yeah. I need, I need it to be in the center, right? I need like the center compartment to be where my, my camera gear is. Um, so that would, that would help quite a bit. But all right, let's get back to the back to the hike here. So this is steep, the hike over this pass to Betty Lake, but it's not dangerous. It's not like the scramble that I did above on this ridge up here above it. You can see the trail there. Um, so this wasn't super dangerous or anything like that. Uh, you can totally make, make that trip and it, it's real easy. Yeah, I even took a solar charger on this one. Like, talk about extra weight. That actually sits in my middle, though. Um, Betty Lake, I didn't fish, but obviously some good fishing. As I mentioned in the video, do not get confused when you go over the saddle at this little lake that's kind of that you can see down below it because that little lake is obviously above Betty Lake and it's like, oh, that must be Goat Lake. It is not Goat Lake. It's a puddle. I'm really glad I bumped into some people to tell me different because I would have stayed there and done this whole video like, Goat Lake sucks. Why is this lake the, this is a dumb lake. Um, I need to check my Garmin more when I'm out there. <laughs> I try, I try not to, um, don't want to get complacent and like rely too heavy on the Garmin. It's pretty crazy that our highest lake is 10,438. That's not that high after being in like Wyoming where it's like, oh, 10,438 is where the trail starts. <laughs> um, and yeah, unfortunately we had a little bit of smoky conditions, but it's this finger like, so if I were to camp again, obviously here <clears throat> and where I noticed people camping is like, and the way you protect from the wind is, um, like I was obviously exposed camping right here. This lake would be a better one to camp with. It's, there's a trail right down here and there's tree cover and things like that. I'm actually kind of glad that the wind whooped my ass because in the Wind River range, I had, like, I knew exactly what I was doing and we were dealing with big wind the whole time. Weird that they call it the Wind River range. So being more tucked into like some trees really helps. Uh, this obviously ledge with the wind was coming off this way would help a lot. So if you go here, if you go to Goat Lake and you're like, oh, I want to camp, um, I would recommend camping at this lower lake down here and not at this actual uh, Goat Lake. 
on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, no, oh, God, so smoky, so terrible. Poor smoke. Okay, so we're back into the fishing. This is the whole reason I went. So I don't know why these things are golden. These are cutthroat trout still, but they have this golden hue, and that's kind of, I guess, unique to this lake. Um, I also, people are like, are you, why didn't you eat them? I mean, I don't know how many golden trout there are left in Idaho, but I definitely don't want to want to eat them. But yeah, you can see with, the, with that red under the throat, that's why they're called cutthroat. I don't know why they have that hue. Uh, if someone here wants to enlighten me, that would be great. But that is the unique part about this lake. Golden trout exist here. So, side note, I broke my Tenkara rod. I stepped on it, the little segment of it, one segment of it. It's really nice. I ordered, uh, you're just able to get online and order another segment from Tenkara Rod Company, which is out of Idaho Falls. So another reason if you're looking at Tenkara Rods, I've been very happy with Tenkara Rod Company. Um, there's a couple of Tenkara companies out of Idaho, but they're, I mean, that was a huge one. The fact that I could just get online, order another part for 15 bucks, and it's super easy to replace. Um, it did start to rain, obviously. There I am in all my, yeah, I, Chris just bought this. He had no, he had never fished with a fly rod either. <laughs> he just brought his fly rod and he's like, do you know how to use this thing? I was like, mm. and, uh, he caught his first fish up there. So everyone can catch fish at this lake if you make it up there. Um, I had more I wanted to say about this, but I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I wanted to start a little. Should I start a little controversy? Nah, let's not do that. Let's not do that, John. Um, look at that golden fish. Oh my God. Look at how beautiful that is. Jesus. Look at that thing. I'm not going to lie, I have a picture of that in my phone and I check it every once in a while. Like, it's pretty sweet. Okay, so obviously the wind kicked my butt and uh, I talked to you about that. The, this is also the Nemo Hornet. So this is a one-person tent. These are its poles. So I also have, <laughs> I've got multiple tents now. Um, I just changed, I just fixed it today. So you can see which one, so the way this works, this is really gonna not be good if I mess this up and I knock something over. Whoa! Easy, easy. Can you guess which part was broken? Maybe the off colored one? So like the way this works is like this, this section right here goes up at the top, you know, and then this one pole reaches down at the bottom, your head goes up with the two poles, and this is where it snapped right here. Um, you know, one person tents, I, I took that dagger out, which is a two person tent, into the winds again, and I was armed with more knowledge about how to like put my tent up against trees and behind boulders and stuff so that worked really well but overall the two-person tent did seem just a lot sturdier there wasn't a lot of shake to it or anything like that you can just tell with the one person like looking at this pole how fragile it could possibly be so when your tent pole breaks what I did so the tent pole broke so these are temple splints. Um, this one is from MSR. You can get it. I got this one from uh, not REI. Idaho Mountain Sports downtown. Cost me five bucks. I didn't know, but Nemo already puts a tent 
tent uh, tent splint in your bag with you. So another another thing with Nemo. If you've never used one of these before, the way it works is real easy. It goes over the brake and then typically you want to carry some sort of tape duct tape with you i use gaff tape that's kind of like a photography staple i keep like a nice solid little roll wrapped around one of the little legs of my tripod old trick chad case taught me always have gaff tape with you um if it's if it's you and you probably don't have a tripod just like roll some duct tape around one of the straps or something in your bag so that you just have it to to do a quick tent repair kit now this part like wedges into a little this part wedges into a little ring at the bottom of my tent so i splinted it and then i put it back and what i needed to do you know chris took his rain fly off that really helped what I needed to do was kind of let the tent go. So I should have taken this part out and basically had the pull system, like instead of being up like that, kind of like laying on me. And I could have used the guidelines and just flattened that tent out a little bit more. Hindsight 2020, like it wasn't raining. I do have a lot of equipment that I was worried about. I don't know why a rain fly protects that more. But if I was going to do it again and I got caught in wind with my one person, I would take this thing, these poles, like out, like at least that one, and use guidelines and basically make the tent flat like a blanket in a bivy sack and use it that way. You're probably like, no shit, John. But <laughs> just in case, like, yeah. So... I got no sleep, I had blisters, and then I decided to hike that stupid, uh, that stupid scramble up on the, uh, up on the ridge there. This was terrifying, so I, I had the, the tripod set out, so you could see, like, those lights are me going by. The wind started to kick up, and I was like, oh my gosh. So I go out, I check the tripod, I go back in. And then I'm like, I'm just terrified that the tripod is gonna fall with my camera. So I ended up going back and getting it. So I had the backpack in there, like wedged up against one of the corners to try where the wind is coming from to just try to protect the, protect the tent. Again, I just fortified it more and that was dumb. Just like, let go, be zen, be one with the wind. Let go, let the tent collapse, take your poles out. Just tie it down if you get stuck in that situation like I did. And get a better night's sleep. I like how Chris, yeah, look at that, stupid. Like, you can see in that shot when it gets to it. As I put these temples away. Also... Nemo, Nemo. Yeah, so there's the splint. There's the tent. Pause, John. I believe in you. Okay, there you go. So you can see I have a guideline. Like, you can see where the wind's coming from, obviously. It's pushing that tent. And I have a guideline even, like, trying to pull against the wind. Um, just everything I did there was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You can see that my bag in the, f in the nose of the tent. You can even see my bag in the nose of the tent right there, how ridiculous that is. Um, so yeah, have we talked about wind long enough? I think so. Moving on. And then I walk over to Chris and he's like, I'm like, Chris, are you okay? The newbie, and he's like, yeah, a little windy last night. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like I was terrified. He was like, yeah, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Uh, and then obviously the, uh, the scramble back up. Oh, something else I wanted to show you guys before we, as I just ramble on here. Did everyone notice the goats in this shot? Did you see it? 
some people noticed, maybe some people didn't, but there is a white mountain goat right here at Goat Lake. You can see him a little bit better right there up against the cloud. Um, just thought that was funny that goats were there at Goat Lake. And then the scramble back. Obviously, I was a. Uh, yeah, just vertical. I didn't even know. I couldn't shoot most of it. So it's like when I got stuck, I just got stuck and it wasn't, I tried to hold the camera. That was the only part when we were pretty much, I was pretty much done where I could put the tripod. I didn't move it and then got to there and I was super pumped. And then I cried like a baby <laughs> and hiked out blisters and all. I thought the goats were. Did your tent get hit by lightning? It did not. Make to. Make sure to invite Thomas Walsh along. Why does that name ring a bell? You think that's just a cutthroat and not a golden? Why? So is there a difference, Isaac, in cutthroat and golden trout? Like, I thought that I was just calling them goldens because they had that golden hue. Um. I, I, like I, I, I couldn't tell if there was a difference. I know there's like a, a golden fish in different states, but I guess golden trout might be the like wrong way to talk about it. It's just a golden cutthroat. I thought the per goats were perfect for goat bite. My tent did not get hit by lightning. You, a Gregory Baltura with a built-in goal zero panel a built-in panel oh that's what I need yeah the goldens are going to have a real pink red band with very few spots so we'll call them golden cutthroats I don't know cutthroats with golden hues I don't know well I think I said everything I wanted to say. If the cutthroats are still bronze color, but less of the red stripe on the side, usually around here. Um, don't forget, if you want to learn more about that sawtooth hike I got coming up, DM me on Instagram. Uh, Goldens are still cutthroats, though? Okay. Yep. And, uh, yeah, got a, got a bunch of stuff coming up. Got my tent pole repair video coming up where I'll show you how to repair a tent pole. I got my REI outfit coming up where I, we, will, we will go over how much it costs to get into an REI hi hiking outfit. Got a hike in the Wind Rivers with my mom. I did an e-bike trip from Spokane to Coeur d'Alene to Wallace up the Hiawatha Trail and back to Spokane that's coming up. And then I have the Sawtooth series coming up this October, the Sawtooth trip. And then at the end of October, I'm going back to the Rogue River with Helfrich doing some steelhead fishing. That'll be on here. And uh, yeah, as always, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. I am glad we are all here together from now on on the trail. I'm actually meeting with Lana at Banana Inc. tomorrow to design a So Here We Are Idaho t-shirt that hopefully uh, I'll be rocking soon and selling on the channel. So. so here we are. All right. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.